Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be answering a question that was asked in the comment section, which is how I make these gradient or ombre effect stickers. But for starters, here's a little fun fact. The difference between gradient and ombre is that with a gradient, you're transitioning from one color to a different color. So I could do blue to orange, for example. But with the ombre effect, the transition is usually between a lighter or darker shade of the same color. So going from like a light blue to a dark blue, for example. So to put it simply, if you're using the same color family, then it's going to be an ombre effect. And if you are transitioning between different colors, that's a gradient. Regardless, the ways that I'm showing you today, you'll be able to do either option, no problem. I'm going to be showing you three different programs that you can use to easily create this effect. The first being Procreate, the second being Affinity Designer on the iPad, and the third being Canva. Within Canva, we are going to explore three different options. The first one is by using Affinity Designer, and once you create that, then you can upload it to Canva and you'll have it forever, which is really nice. You can use it for an unlimited time on any commercial or personal products. The second option is using elements that are already within Canva, and if you are a Canva Pro subscriber, it does open up some of the doors for commercial use. However, I would always Always double check the licenses just in case. And the third option is using this really cool website that breaks the gradient into different hex codes and then you can use those hex codes to build a gradient effect in Canva. All of these options are super easy regardless of your skill level and are all relatively affordable options if not free. For your convenience I will leave links to everything that I talk about in today's video in the comment section below and also timestamps to each of these sections if you would like to skip around. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So right now I am in Canva. I'm just going to come back to my gallery. So within this app, I always like to sort my things into little file folders. So my first image is always something like this. So if I come back to my main library here, it has all of these nice cover photos, which is really easy to read and find quickly what it is that I'm looking for. If you are a Procreate user, you've probably noticed that even using stacks can be a bit disorganized and it's so hard sometimes to read these little tiny titles. And so for me, I found this is the best thing that works for me. If you want to see a little mini tutorial on how to do that, let me know in the comments below. I will be more than happy to show you guys. But here in my stickers folder, I'm just going to create a new canvas. And generally when I'm making things in Procreate, I tend to use a 3000 by 3000 pixel canvas at 300 DPI. However, if you're making a sticker set that you want to be printable, and let's say you want it to be on typical letter paper, that's eight and a half by 11 inches, then you can just come up here and add new canvas and you can make sure it's on inches and here just do 8.5 and 11 and then I would still make sure that you're at 300 dpi here and then what I always do is I'll come right back here and I will just drag this over so that this is still the top folder so I've just rotated this because I prefer the landscape view but what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come into my brush library and then in the calligraphy section I'm just going to use the monoline brush and I'm going to make the size as big as it gets and then I'm just going to grab my selection tool, this little ribbon. I'm going to make sure it's on rectangle and then tap color fill. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle. Now I'm going to come to my layers menu, add a layer, and then I'm going to start drawing using the colors that I want for my gradient. So from my colors menu, I'm just going to open it and then drag it so it's nice and conveniently located here and then i'm just going to come down to this bottom right corner and tap on my palettes and it's going to take me to whatever palette is set as the default so right now i have these colors that i want to use for this gradient so i'm just going to start with this pink and then color it this way and you really want to do cover it quite well if you don't feel like coloring you have the alternative of coming to the selection tool like we were on before making sure it's on rectangle and color fill choosing your color and then you can just kind of drag it all over and it'll fill it tap off of it tap it again change the color there we go tap off tap back on grab the green fill it tap off tap back on with the blue and there you go and then i'm just going to come up here to the adjustments menu i'm going to tap gaussian blur and then just blur this image until i like it and the blue i'm not super concerned about because the blue is the same color but if you start to see any edges like this then you're going to want to go back and cover them up so i could just add a little extra down here at the bottom. All right, coming back to our adjustments menu, tapping Gaussian Blur. Let's blur this until we like it and then tap off of it. And now you can just come into your layers menu, tap on this layer and tap Clipping Mask. 
and now you have this really cute rainbow gradient effect here. You have a few options now. So I used to make stickers in Canva and I still do sometimes for fun if I want to make something really artistic. It's just easier to draw and procreate, but I found it's just so much more work with constantly having to crop things, doing everything one by one. And so I really admire when people do that and take all that extra time, but I've found that I can really streamline my process through Affinity Designer. So now what you can do is come to your layers menu and toggle off the background color. Come to this wrench icon here and under the actions menu, make sure you're on share and then you can tap PNG. So this will save it without the background and you can save it as an image or save it to your files or Dropbox, however you want to do it. Otherwise you can just hit copy and then you don't have to save it, but you can just come into good notes, long press, paste, and then you can tap on it and crop it. And with the rectangle tool, it makes it super easy to just crop this in, hit done. And there you go. You've got this really nice sticker that you can use anywhere you want. Now I absolutely love Procreate and if you like any element of design and doing anything hand-drawn, I highly recommend it if you don't already have it. It's so much fun for digital drawing and there is so much that you can do with it. However, when it comes to making my sticker sets, because these stickers usually have like three or four hundred different images included in the sticker set, I found that it can be really, really hard to find that balance between keeping the files small enough so that the sticker page and the planner then don't lag while also maintaining a quality of image that I can scale up and down. And my second complaint about the sticker sets is that you do have to go in and individually crop every single sticker and it can be quite a tedious project. So that is why I've switched all of my sticker making to Affinity Design. So now we're just going to jump into Affinity Designer 2 and if you don't know much about this program it essentially does most of what Adobe Illustrator does. It's a vector-based program. It's really amazing and if you consider the cost of having the Adobe Suite or even just one Adobe product and it being subscription-based you are saving so much money if you can get by with Affinity Designer and I have found that there are very very few shortcomings in Affinity Designer and I can usually create some sort of workaround for me if it's missing something that I can do in Illustrator. So if you're a designer on a budget, I could not recommend this enough. You can also do a 30-day trial if you're not sure, but to get this for the iPad, it's only $11.99 right now because it's 40% off. So it's a really good deal in general, like $20 for complete access. There's no subscription. It's truly amazing. But you can also do a 30-day trial if you're not sure if you're quite interested in spending that money but just know that the offer for 40% off only goes until January 25th. So you would miss out on that deal if you don't make the purchase before then. But a one-time fee of $19.99 for a program that does everything that Affinity Designer does is beyond worth it. I'm personally still using the older version of Affinity Designer. They recently released Affinity Designer 2. And so I did go ahead and download that so I could show you guys what that's like. But when you open it on the left side in this bar, you'll see a spot that says new. You can just tap on new, hit new document. Just like before, let's use a letter size and I still make sure that everything is 300 DPI. I'm going to hit OK here and it's going to open up a new document and then this line here shows the eight and a half by 11 size canvas and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to this shape tool here. Right now it's the shape of a rectangle and I'm just going to tap on it and then what I'm going to do is draw out a rectangle just like we did before and then on this right side there's a little gray circle. This is where you can change the color. So I'm going to tap on this. The first thing that I want to do is tap on the right side of that first gray circle there. And I know it's hard to see, but there's actually a black circle. And I'm just going to change the color to red so that you can see it better. But that right there is the outline. So we want to get rid of that. So I'm going to come down here to this quick colors spot and where you see the box with the blue line through it. We're just going to tap on that and that's going to get rid of that border. Then I'm going to come back to the circle on the left and this is where we're going to have some fun. So first let's just pick a random color that we like, like this green for example. And then on the left side here, there's this little gradient fill tool. You can tap and then drag it and this has now adjusted the fill here. So what I'm going to do now is change this color. So maybe I want it to be like, oh, let's say like a yellow I think might be better. And you can just drag within your triangle here to adjust the color to where you like it. And you can even take this center piece here and you can adjust where the gradient lies. 
Okay, so now that we have this, I'm just going to grab the little mouse here, this move tool in the upper left corner, and then I'm going to tap this hamburger menu here, go down to export, and now the important part here is that where it says area, you are selecting selection only. So that's going to select and crop only the piece that you selected, which is amazing. And then there are all of these different formats that we can export in. If you're just exporting this to GoodNotes, you can tap PNG, and then you can hit OK if you want to save it to your files, or you can just tap Share here, and then copy it and come right into GoodNotes. Press and paste, and then you can just resize this and save this image as part of your sticker set. Now my other favorite thing to do is instead tap SVG, and then you can save this so we're just going to put green gradient just for my own personal saving purposes but you can just save this as gradient i just already have a file called gradient tap ok find where you're going to save it as and then make sure that you tap move up here in the corner and now what that means is that you have a vector version of this image so jpegs and pngs are raster images and the sizing can only be changed so much but with an svg it's infinitely scalable it's truly a beautiful thing but i digress we're going Going to take that file into Canva. When you create things in Affinity Designer as SVGs and you have different colors, if you take them into Canva, you can keep the image but change the color. It's so cool. I can do a whole video and show you guys how to do that. If you're interested, just let me know in the comments below. All right, so coming into Canva, we're going to create a design and just to keep it consistent, let's go ahead and stay with that 11 by 8 and a half. And then we're going to come over to the left and hit uploads. And as you can see, I was testing out some options, but we're just going to upload that green gradient. So upload files, choose files. I'm gonna go to my iCloud drive where I saved this and tap on the green gradient, hit open. And then now that it's loaded, I'm just gonna tap and enter this. And you can see up here in the corner, there are two different colors. That's because you can change these and make them into anything. So now that I have these two colors, I can change it to these ones, for example. It really is one of my favorite things. So like I said, I've been doing that with tons of different SVGs. I don't know if it's just my iPad or my internet connection or what, but I do wanna be completely honest with you guys. Sometimes when I'm in here and I try to upload an older SVG, and I go to adjust it, the color doesn't change. So you can see I changed this from that pretty blue to this purple and it's not changing. There's nothing wrong with the SVG file. If I go onto the website, it works flawlessly. So I don't know what the deal is with it, but if I just change it and close out of the program and then open it back up, it will update in the right color. It's really weird. And then suddenly it works again. So just bear that in mind. On the website, like I said, no issues at all with this, but I run into this problem with my iPad all the time. So just something to keep in mind. Another option you have here is just to come into your elements and then in the lines and shapes, add on this square here, tap off of it and tap back on again. And then here you can just adjust it if you want it to be like longer, for example. And while in elements, then you can search gradient. And then here you'll find images that already exist and you'll find graphics. This is what we want to look at. I'm going to tap see all. And then what you can do is you can add one of these. So the only thing with that is that you do have to size it to be the same width and to start in the same place, but then you can just add whatever color you want it to fade from or to. And there you have it. You are limited to whatever it is that the element allows you to do. This is why I love to make my own. You can also use this one. For example, this one goes from purple to white. So we can change this from blue to, let's say, this color. Again, I personally am not a fan of these, which is why I first wanted to show you guys different ways that you could do it on your own. Here's another one. This one is a much better file, in my opinion. It's a lot more like the ones that I showed you guys how to make, but whatever your preference is, now you've got options. So now that I've deleted all this, I just want to show you guys one more thing. So I'm going to come back to my elements and I'm going to add in this rectangle here. And then we are going to make it more rectangular. I'm just going to drag it up here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate it a few times. So I've duplicated it eight times and then I'm going to zoom in. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of drag these down a little bit and I'm just going to place them on top of each other relatively close together. And the nice thing is that Canva kind of snaps this all together for you. And I'm just going to move one of these pieces up just ever so slightly. And I'm going to tap on the bottom one, hit these three dots, and hit select multiple. And I'm going to go through and select all eight of these, hit done, hit the three dots in this upper corner, and tap position. 
Now they're already center aligned, which is great, but I just want to space them evenly vertically. So I'm going to tap that and then I'm going to move this whole thing down just so you can see it better. And now these are perfectly spaced together. There aren't going to be any gaps between them either, which is perfect. And what we're going to do is we're going to use that website that I mentioned at the beginning. So coming back to Safari. So here's the website. And like I said, I will link everything that I talked about in the video down in the description. But the really cool thing about this website is that you can put in a start color and an end color and you can decide how many colors you want. And then it will give you all of these different gradients, which is so cool. So for our gradient, I know that we're going to be using eight because I have eight squares on the other page. I really do like this color but I think I want to change this to, I don't know, something a little different. All right, we're going to do this blue. I think I like this. I think this is pretty. Export. We're just going to save it as an image. And I'm just going to save this as blue gradient. Hit export. And then you're going to download it. Now we're going to come back to Canva. We're going to tap upload, upload files, choose files, then go to your downloads folder. I'm going to tap on this blue gradient and we're going to open this. And the cool thing here is that it does give you the hex codes. So you can always read those numbers. So this is great when you're on your computer, for example. But when you're on the iPad, Canva has a nice eyedropper tool. So you can come to the one that you want to change, tap on it, and then tap the color. And then hit the plus sign, grab the eyedropper, tap on the top image, hit done. Come to the second one, tap on the eyedropper, bring it over the second color, hit done. The third one, eyedropper, color, done. Now you get the process, so I'm going to speed through this. So I really like these ones for notes. I think that they're really cute. So you have the option here to get a little bit creative with them. And I won't spend too much time on this because I am done. <laughs> but you can take this image, for example, put it over it. Let's turn it white. Let's resize it so it's pretty even on all the edges. And then you can leave it like that if you want to. Or you can come up here to the three dots, tap on the transparency mode here, and just drag that down. And I think these are cute. I like to make stickers this way. Um, an alternative option would be, let's take this away for a second. And then you could come into your elements and write, let's say, heart, for example. Tap heart. And then there are cute hearts on here. Again, make sure you check the commercial licensing here if you're using them for anything other than personal use. I'm just going to resize these here and put it in there. And then you can duplicate it, duplicate it, duplicate it, duplicate it, duplicate it, duplicate it duplicate it. And it's nice because Canva just automatically spaces them for you. That is a lifesaver. And then you have this super cute sticker. So now if you want to use any of these in GoodNotes, what you can do is just tap on one of these, tap the three dots, tap select multiple, tap everything that you want in one sticker. So I want these hearts as well. This is so cute. Tap done, tap the three dots, hit group. So this is all one thing. So now let's say we just want the one sticker. I'm going to delete these other ones here just to get them out of the way. And now there's only one thing on this canvas. So I'm just going to come up here to this little export button, going to tap download, and then make sure it's on PNG because then we can tap on transparent background. Now, this is a Canva Pro feature. So if you don't have Canva Pro, you unfortunately cannot download these images without a background. So I am fond of Canva Pro and this is how I would do it. But alternatively, you can just change this here to JPEG and then you can just hit download, copy it, come into GoodNotes, paste it, and then you can just do what you would normally do, which is crop it. You might lose a little bit of the quality here, unfortunately. Either way, I still think that it looks pretty good and it's definitely usable. And you could absolutely do something just like this in Affinity Designer if you wanted to make everything on your own so that you had complete freedom to do whatever you wanted with these files. So as I mentioned, I will leave links to everything that I talked about in today's video, including links to the websites and the apps that I mentioned. But I'll also include a little freebie via a Dropbox link of this SVG. So if you're not interested in creating your own using Affinity Designer, you can just upload this to Canva. You can use it commercially, personally, I don't care, whatever you want, and just upload it into Canva and adjust the colors yourself. So I hope that that answers all of your questions. If you have any other ones, please leave them in the comments. I try my best to read and respond to all of them and make videos according to what it is that you guys want to see. So that's all for now. Thanks again for tuning in and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.